What's up everybody, this is Mark with Idea Machine Co. Sitting here with the Post Millennial Podcast host, Klesko Markarian, I said it right? You said it right. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, gone. social media, media disruptor, I would say, <laughs> like, distractor. <laughs> you could say that, yeah. Uh, yeah. you could say that, yeah. yeah. We're, we're, we wrapped season one, we're uh, preparing for season two, and you know, basically we just like to shed light on all the bullshit you see on social media, Mark, I mean, because you know damn well you see a lot of bullshit, you know, the there's life all, coaches, there's always the health a lot. coaches, yeah. the positive coaches, positive vibes, positive vibes, I think people get a little tired of being well, that's like this, lied to all the time. Well, you know? that's like the, the zero fucks thing, like when people say zero fucks given, like you should never not give a shit. Like you should never not give a fuck. You should be out there, you should be caring, you should True. be mindful, you should be True. trying to help and do all these things, not just like, fuck you, I'm gonna do whatever I want, because that, that doesn't help anybody at the end of the day. You know, it doesn't, and I think just a lot of people, it's monkey see, monkey do, and it's just, they're just copying and duplicating and replicating the same hashtags, the same patterns and paradigms and uh, filters that they see by their so-called influencers that they that they idol and they bow down to and pray uh, to. And, uh, <laughs> well, it's, some definitely it's, it's just for ridiculous. Sure. Yeah, yeah, some definitely for sure. Yeah, people it, need to people need to like you know believe in themselves and uh, and be their own. Uh, well, you know, it's a hard it's a hard carve thing. their own path in it, life. It's a hard thing right now to 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 believe in oneself just because you have to go out and portray and act and be like somebody potentially you are or are not on Instagram to be able to get likes and get views and trying to figure out kind of like how to navigate that system to see like, okay, am I gonna do this to monetize something or am I gonna do this to like get the likes and make me feel whole, you know? So there's two totally different things out there, right? Yeah, and you're right. As, as for a business standpoint, it makes sense for us um, to kind of go out and talk and do all these extra things that we normally wouldn't do on a regular basis. Right. Um, just because like we're trying to make sure that we can employ all of our uh, all of our employees and have people right. come in and taste what we're doing and try something different. So I think people try to yeah people different. people try to do both. I think they're trying to they, they use social media to make money and they also use it for for the dopamine rush of you know the validation of the likes and you know sliding in on the DMs and the the, the comments and the praise and the compliments and all of that stuff. Um, but but really there's there's mental disease going on, Mark. There's there's a lot of mental health, you know, especially for the younger people, people, people in high school, college, who really just are coming of age and just seeing this whole world, you know, this social media revolution, uh, and it's just they're trying to fit in. Right. And I think a lot of them are falling victim to, to, to mental, you know, health and yeah. uh, problems. Well, we're, we're the really first generation to see how it's going to get, how who's going to get fucked up first, you know, because like we still realize what it is like to go out and play outside. To have fun, to have friends across the street that you go knock on right. the door and do stuff outside. Right. You know. Right. Uh, right. I mean, yeah. we we started off with no pagers. Right. Then we had pagers. Right. Then we had cell phones, <laughs> and then it started keep creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. But I remember being in high school. You know, we were playing fucking snake and doing shit like that. But we text messaging was a fucking like people it didn't, didn't happen. People didn't, didn't really, really do it. Yeah, we're in our late. You know, if you're in your late thirties, you know, born in the early eighties, you, you kind of saw every. You've seen like the pre. Right. You know, Computer the pretty digital world, up, and then you lost the fucking floppy disk. Like. We, we've totally seen the, the, the evolution of computers and computer technology from when they were like giant, you know, machines in the, you know, in the right. early 80s to, right. to, 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 to smartphones, you know? Right. And so we, we can kind of separate ourselves from the, the, the fakery and the facade that social media is, but people who are, you know, 18 to 27 or 30, maybe not so much, you know? And uh, it's, it's really ca causing a lot of mental disease and, and people need to know how to separate fact from fiction. They need to know to pull the curtain uh, of social media and see what's really behind the curtain, because I can guarantee you what's behind the curtain is not what's in front of the curtain, as is evidenced by this metaphorical mask that I'm wearing. Right, and uh, I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna eat some food, right? Because hey, what are we eating here? So we have our, our 10 Hey, ounce. Lock and Key, Social Drinkery, woo! Right, we have our 10 ounce <laughs> prime uh, filet, right? Cooked medium for your request. Right, right. So that. You're like, so the medium thing, is there a reason why you for medium that you like it then medium rare or well done or I've I've always I've always gone with medium when I when I eat steaks. It's kind okay. of like what how I how I like life is balanced, you know, okay. the light side, the dark side, not too cooked, <laughs> not too under. Right. So I don't know. It's 
Maybe medium rare tastes a little bit more flavorful because of, you got more of the red stuff. Now, I was watching one of your episodes and you were like saying how the red stuff isn't blood. It's not blood. Well, what is it? So there's, my, there's myoglobin and there's hemoglobin. So okay. two totally different things. So the myoglobin is going to be an iron rich water, which gives it that red kind of rusty kind of look to it. Uh -huh. Then you have hemoglobin, which is blood, which runs through arteries and veins. So this is a muscle. And a lot of people don't even know that like you're eating a muscle. Like this is a fucking muscle from a cow. There's no like fillet part and there's no like ribeye part that's just like floating around inside. Right. There. It's right. the actual muscle that you're eating. Right. And that's the reason why there's grating and fat and like the fat content. Um, for something like this, like you can go with medium because there's not a lot of fat in here. It does tend to start to get dry. You're not in that dry area yet with at medium, but it can get kind of dry. Okay. You know, as you okay. start going low, because there's no fat inside there, that intermuscular fat right. is not rendering out, getting hot, and kind of melting, get all like oozy, gooey, and, and, and tasteful. Okay. Um, and the, the fat is what actually gives the flavor. The flavor, right. So yeah, the more you cook it, the less fat will be uh, permeating it's, into the muscle. Right, it'll it'll render out, and it, well, but that's also the juices too, that kind of when you cut into it, that's the rendered fat out of it also too okay, as well. So some of it, and then others, it's water too as well. Now we have a dry age steak. This is not a dry age steak, this is a wet age steak. Okay. You know, the difference between like a dry age and a wet age, dry age is, you know, out in the open being dried. Wet age is they cut it and then throw it into a package and then back I see, it. I see, okay. And then we get it around 21 to 27 days for a wet age product like okay, this. Okay, all right. Yeah, so, so we're gonna yeah, try we'll just go right into it. And then what you want to look at it too, if, you're, if we're going into like the steak stuff, is see where everything is running, like see which way everything is going. You want to cut, cut across the grain instead of with the grain. Okay. So if you're cutting with the grain, it's going to be super chewy. Okay. You cut across the grain and we cut it in half like this. This is going to be more tender. And it'll be more tender, yeah. Okay. So you have that. There you go. Oh wow. I don't know if I'm going to finish that, Mark, but uh, I'm, I'll try. So I have a freaking... I don't know if I'm gonna, I'm definitely not because I'm not I'm not supposed to have any salt. I'm not supposed to have oh really uh, anything like that right now until Saturday because I have a jiu-jitsu, my first jiu-jitsu tournament. This is a medium. This is close to medium. Okay. Yeah. Wow. It's medium rareish medium. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gonna be nice, tender. It's gonna pull through. Uh, yeah, very tender. Yeah, super soft. But you're not gonna get like that overly dry kind of you know thing as if you start going into like medium or, or well done or anything yeah. like that. No, that's not dry at all. Yeah, and there's no like, there's no medium plus, so like don't go out there or say medium rare plus. There's no fucking such thing. As there's that. no such thing. Yeah, and then we're going to probably go and change things up a little bit over here into being because like everybody on Instagram or out there is, how would you say, it? they're watching these videos right, right of right. saying that and everything out there is is rare that they're cooking they're like searing shit off and putting it out there on Instagram and saying right. that it's mid rare right um, but nobody is paying attention to like actual temperature okay right so nobody's saying like oh for medium rare you want to be 125 degrees okay so I think we're gonna actually change the way we do things here because it's easier for you to say 125 oh. and me to show you a steak with a temperature gauge saying 125. Okay. You know, right now you're telling me you want medium rare or medium, uh -huh. right? And that's uh -huh. a color. Okay. And your idea of color could be different from my idea of color. You know, like red is looks differently to you than it does to me. Right. Uh -huh. Or if it's dark in here and you really can't see what it is, you know, then you can complain and say, hey, like this is overcooked. But when you go and deal with absolutes or fact, like this is, a, you know, this is the temperature. Here you go. Yeah. I think it's going to be a lot easier. Yeah, because like I'm noticing that here it's a lot more pink. This looks medium, whereas certain parts of it where it's more, more well, darker more red the, looks more medium rare. More to the center part of it is too, like, and the way that we do it. You could throw on that steak and put it upside down on this. This plate is still hot. So it'll still continue to cook too as well. Oh, really? Try to do that? Yeah, so I just throw it up there and put it right on top. Yeah, then flip it over. Like this? Or on this side? No, perfect. So it's still hot, it's still gonna continue to cook. They brought it out right away. Uh, Normally they would let it rest on the on the plate and everything. Mm -hmm. and that way it would start to heat up and it would get to the like the true medium right. temperature. Mm. But I found now by having to like talk to people about steaks and about color and about all these other things, like it's better just to go temperature wise. And yeah. a lot of people don't know. Yeah. You know like they've sent steaks back that are perfect. And I'm asking them like, okay, hey, like 
where do you want it to be? Because this is medium rare. I'm like, oh, a little less than that. So they're basing it off off vision and color as right. opposed to temperature. Right. And like what it's for base lay, it's yeah. always going to be like you see how it kind of tapered out a little bit. There's a shorter end, and the, so one side is going to cook faster than the other. Right. That's the reason why you cut directly down the center. Right. And you'll be able to tell. Um, when you cut down the center, you'll be able to say what the true temperature of this because it's to the thickest part of the steak, not all the way around. Right. Now, there's tricks for that. You can sous vide. Um, you can do these things. Um, sous vide? I have no idea what a so, sous vide. Do you guys know what a sous vide is? I don't so know. So a sous vide is basically <laughs> under pressure. It's a, it, you're cooking in a bag that's vacuum sealed, and then you put it in a water bath, and then that's sitting in there to be able to give you the exact temperature all the way around the beef. Okay. So you can set it at 125, or what you would do for a steak like this is you would set it to probably 110. Uh -huh. It would reach temperature 110 all the way around. You would take it out and then you would sear it. Okay. Right? And then serve it. Oh. So that way you just have like cooking, a little bit of cooking outside, and you still have it to be like medium rare or rare on the inside. Right, okay. You know, so there's different ways, like, there's like shortcuts and everything else, you know. So, so Mark, we, we had an episode, you know, months ago about the, the, the concept known as food porn. Right. And the, and the food porn, you know, revolution on social media. And you've been a big part of that with lock and key and showing, you know. A little bit. The, 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 what is it called? The, the tomahawk. The hot. The, the fire burger. What's it called? The hot Cheeto nachos. Hot Cheeto pie. Hot Cheeto pie and this and that and all the hashtags. So when do you think and or why do you think this whole thing about taking pictures of food, like why did that become a thing and, and uh, do you think that's going to keep on lasting or uh, is that going to die out or has well, it already? It, I don't know. It depends on if Instagram is going to let it die out or let it keep going. So the way the algorithm is right now too, like who knows? I mean, videos have kind of quieted down a little bit. They're not really like... They're not really allowing people to kind of like go like full clip with all of their people who are following them right now. Right. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with that. Um, you know, people want to share their experiences. Like they want to show what they had. Right. What you, like I'm here, you're not. To yeah. some people, or yeah. I'm here, you guys should try this also too. I'm eating yeah. this, you're not eating. Right. This, you know? Yeah. Or this is so good, I want everybody to see it. Right. Right. Good. Two like different ways to kind of look about, look, look at it. Yeah. As long as people are getting likes and getting shares and getting all that, yeah, I, I don't see it kind of going anywhere. Right. The only thing that it is right now, chewing, 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 is that right now it's like we used to go to the fair to get crazy fucking food. Right. Right. Like corn dogs and this or that or frog legs. Now you can go to any restaurant. Restaurants are serving fair food. And they're serving that kind of like that outrageous food. Yeah. So there's a lot, there's like, just like the craft beer craze, right? It was really big when we started started this up. And not gonna say that it's like super dead or dying out, but everybody is not drinking IPAs anymore. They're drinking now blondes and lagers and pilsers and all these extra things that okay. aren't exactly the same as the IPAs that were like full full hog. So okay. there's an over how do you say it? Satiate. They're overly satiated. Okay. Or like they're overstimulated. Or, overstimulated. Their uh, their palate is wrecked. Yeah. And they're doubling down on, on easier, softer, you know, higher quality. Not higher quality, but cleaner versions of what they first had. So we might see. We might see a jump back from all the fucking fair shit to say like, oh no, we just want the steak with some butter, some salt and pepper, and that's it. Or we just want minimalist, ice minimalist ice eating, yeah. minimalist uh, could be a food thing. porn. Yeah. Food porn. Where does that come from? <laughs> Definitely somebody our age. <laughs> I guess so. Right? I guess so. So. But, what else do you recommend on your menu here? Like, what is one of the what's your, one of your hottest selling items right now? Uh, so right now we have like the fire burger is pretty cool. That's the one that we light on fire and do everything. Okay. Um, that does sell a lot. Our burger sells out like sells a lot. The tomahawk's still kicking strong. Okay. You know, people, everybody wants to celebrate. They want to come down. They want to have fun. So, you know, the tomahawk is one of those things that like, oh, I I, I want to have a good steak dinner and I want to share it. Now it's a shareable item, but. Excuse me, like we do have people that do take it down by themselves too as well. Yeah. I can't eat that much meat, you know, it's just way too much for me, but for some people it works. I notice you guys like at Lock and Key really cater to the 
you know, what's gonna look good on social media in a video or picture, you know, menu items. Cause you guys do the fire and, and you know, bl blow torches and right. waterfalls and all kinds of, you know, you know, unicorns Effects. come out of your food and right? And like, you know, well, people, celebrities come out. I don't know, all these weird well, things so, happen. So, so. so the big thing about that is that we don't really Yes, we do things that get people to like, a, oh my god, that's really cool, that's interesting. Right. But at the very beginning of everything, the, the, the taste has to be there. That's the number one most important thing. Uh -huh. We don't put anything else that we think that's like, ah, we kind of missed the ball or we dropped it, like, fuck it, let's just light it on fire and do stupid shit like that. Uh -huh. Which you see a lot of people doing. A lot of people are starting to light, like, I've seen somebody light a, uh, a pizza on fire. And so now you're going to see, because I did this. <laughs> don't do this at home, kids. Because we did this, like, we're going to see a lot of people trying to light other types of foods on fire right, now right. other than it being like something like traditional like the uh, baked Alaskan or bananas from Bay or something like that you but guys need to put disclaimers on all this stuff you know right try and try not to be doing this at all and burn your kitchen down. or the restaurants because other restaurants are gonna try to attempt it and fail yeah uh, it's not it's not gonna be a good thing for sure Let's talk about let's talk about you guys are here located on on Downey Avenue in the city of Downey, which this this was pretty much a a ghost town for decades. Nobody nobody was here. All of a sudden, you guys open up a bar, and then you have bars across the street, bars down the street. You have bars everywhere. Uh, how have you know how has the economy here and the, the nightlife scene uh, changed, uh, and how how responsible is Lock and Key for that? So it seems like things changed once you guys opened up here. Well, we, we gave people, we changed the, the drinking culture for sure. So I don't want to say we tra transformed too much, you know, without being too big of a dick. But, <laughs> you know, it is one of those things that, like, we were in a, a beer, a Corona, like, buckets of Corona type thing, you know, um, where we go out and have a beer or you have a Jack and Coke and that was it. Right. So we started the culture in the, in, with... People understand that you can have an old fashioned, have two, and be done. You know, obviously, like there's people who do kind of go in excess of three to four, but we yeah. gotta maintain that as much as possible. Okay, um, and we try to do that as best as we can. So we're not trying to add into the shittier aspects of uh -huh. like the nightlife scene. Like we want everybody to be respectful and have fun, but at the same time too, like. Not over, not overstep their fucking boundaries. Right, you, you will get kicked out of here. We we have a reputation for that too as well. Just saying, kicking like, people out. Yeah. yeah, just for acting like. Cool you guys enough. sing when you kick people out. Nah, 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 nah. We should. We should hey, just start hey. playing that. Ring the bell. Goodbye. That would be hilarious. Right. <laughs> but I mean, we, at the same time, we want to be respectful too, and we don't want to, like all of a sudden now there's yelps and there's everything else, like because that's that's another fucking topic. But yeah, um, yeah, I, I, I want to say that we changed the culture here for sure. Um, it was something new. It was something different. Um, and now there's like now TGI Fridays and freaking Lucille's and all these like other mate mass uh, mass restaurants. You know, chain are, restaurants. Chain yeah. restaurants are. Uh, what are they doing? Now? They're copying. Well, you they're doing. Not that they're copying me, but they're co co copying the scene of the smaller restaurants being able to act more swiftly and be able to change their cocktail menu no, re yeah, rapidly yeah. and readily. Well, that's and a like good with thing. Seasons. Yeah, that's it's a, a good, good thing, thing but they also dumb down what we do. Right, right. So well, they'll fresh juices and handcrafted drinks or whatever. When, yeah. when even before we started doing shit, it was all handcrafted. Like, right. there, was, there was never like, a, oh, it's like... A machine is making this or whatever before everything is handcrafted Individual no matter what. Yeah, right, so when right. when they start using buzz or or um, keywords like that or hashtags like that, like it it, it kind of demeans what everybody before that cheapens the value. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You touched on something. You you said on Yelp, uh, you know, and I've I've seen your I've seen the L LKSD uh, a, account oftentimes. Uh, uh, respond to comments, whether it's on Instagram or Yelp, uh, and and sometimes get into troll fights with some people. Uh, you know, how, what's your what's your whole uh, approach with uh, comments on Yelp and and on uh, Instagram? Do you, you know, do, do you tend to see a lot of people being uh, you know total totally irrational a holes, or uh, for the most part, are people pretty straightforward and honest? And like, uh, you well, know, what, think, what, what goes down? Uh, what goes down on the on the on the comment threads on Yelp? Well, I, it, it's not just Yelp, but it's also other things. The biggest thing that I ever did was when somebody came in here and tried to disrespect any of my staff or act like or say that they 
went out of their way to give a bad experience or say that they were racist or say anything like that, like, it, it, then I stood up for everybody right away. I mean, that's the biggest so thing. So people have done that. People have said, yeah. like, oh, so-and-so was racist. I've been called a racist. Oh, you here. have been. I've been called a racist here, too. By, by, by okay. patrons. Even though I'm Mexican. By like, patrons. Yeah. Oh, wow. But yeah, one, because we didn't have... At the time when we first opened up, there was no good craft beer coming out of Mexico. None. Okay. Now there are some, so now we have some things. But we were a craft beer bar and doing craft whiskey and having whiskey, and we had no, we didn't have Grey Goose, we didn't have Kettle One, we didn't have. I mean, we didn't have a lot of like mainstream things. You know, and then I got called racist, you know, because I didn't really? have any Mexican beer. Interesting. But then, like, the, the guy who wanted it was Mexican, and what me is thinking, like, okay, well, dude, like, you're all, you're Mexican, you're only drinking Mexican beer. I mean, that doesn't sound right at all either, too. I mean, like, okay, let's open. Like, we, what I wanted here when we first opened up was to be able to bring people down here to try new things. And if they weren't in that kind of mind frame and they were already kind of douchey and didn't want to kind of venture out. Then this wasn't the place for them. Okay. You know, I also was told like, oh, I've had this is the worst bar experience I ever had because we didn't have certain items that she was used to ordering. We don't have Bacardi. You guys don't have Hennessy. You guys don't have these things. Now we've added some different things later because honestly the market has changed a little bit, so we started ta tapping into that. But you know, I told her to go home. Like, if you don't want to be here, just go home. She's okay, so, like, that's the way you want to handle it. So, uh, so, so, okay, so, 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 when you told her that, was that on social media or was that no, face so this, to face? This, this was just in face to face comments oh, that we have okay. here. Now, we've also been people have said that, and, and I go back and forth with people saying like, no, this is the case. This is this. This is that. These are the facts. You forgot to you forgot to say this, or I just try to be funny. And right now, it's a very trolly atmosphere. That's that's so that's kind of what I, I wanted to get. So I I've, 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 I've backed off a lot. Like unless it's a comment where I need to go in and kind of like whoa 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 what happened here? Let me try to figure this out. Um, so do you believe most of the, engage. Do you believe most of the criticism on uh, Yelp or so or Instagram is uh, is troll based and it's more about about getting garnering attention for their individual account name as opposed to lending genuine criticism to your establishment? What do you think? Well, I haven't seen any genu genuine criticism out there. Like, there's there's nothing with, and, and genuine criticism comes from genuine people. You know, if you're and coming you don't, in there. You and, don't think genuine people exist when they are commenting on, on Yelp? No, I don't. I, I think that they are caught in the moment and they like the likes, they like saying something funny or brash or whatever, and then when somebody says back to them, they're all of a sudden, oh my God, they there's an interaction. I'm gonna stand up for myself instead of going like, oh, we'll pull back and go, oh, okay. Yeah, I see what you're saying. You know, the same thing with like the fire burger that we poured on fire. Everybody, yeah. everybody, it's the most hated fucking burger on the internet. Is but it it's really? also the most selling burger that we sell. Interesting. You know, so that's very telling because it, it kind of it, it's it's kind of a revelation of 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 how this whole medium and system has lent itself to again look at me look at me and, and right. you know the look at me generation the attention and so you know, people use Yelp you know people have friends on Yelp like like it's a social network right. you know like there's a popularity contest on Yelp right. it's absolutely well, ridiculous and they, and they do that based on like the uh, Yelp elite and you know, all these other right, things right. and they're it's really hilarious. like funneling and and pushing that that uh, you know the, that addiction you know, no and sure. they absolutely are and it, it's just interesting because you know people will will use the platform of Yelp to criticize or just to find some excuse of to bitch about something at a restaurant your restaurant or any other restaurant well, the biggest thing and it's really they, about yeah. you know generating a, 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 a cult a following or a branding or something for them and their whole persona as opposed Sometimes. to Right, right, right. Sometimes. Not sometimes. all the time. Not all the time. But, but there are people yeah. that are giving genuine criticisms as well. Oh, yeah. I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Or no, genuine sure. reviews. Like, I didn't like this, or I really oh, like okay. this place. Right, or right. No, 100%. And, and we don't need to be everything for all people. Like, we, right. can't, we can't do that, first off. I can't yeah, make me everybody me. happy. And we're we're all human. So there's going to be some mistakes where there's a little bit more salt on something than, a, than another thing. Right. So, like to keep that in mind and and understand that this is still a human process right and that there's humans involved and like there's people who, who feed their kids but or, and, you know and make money to feed their kids by working here and doing right. all these things and people saying you know, like giving a I don't think any restaurant deserves a one first off uh -huh. like that to me that's just a fucking retarded thing like, right you know I'm not even supposed to say that word uh -huh. but that's just so like Mentally, mentally challenged. It's so, it's so out there, so disconnected to say like, fuck this place, it's a one, because I sat there for 15 minutes and they didn't refill my water. Like, 
Well, hold on. Like, were you in an at, were you in a comp, were you engaged in a conversation? Were you already rude to the person beforehand? I mean, yes, we want to try to serve you, but if you're already like confrontational, nobody wants to go up to that table. Or, like I said, were you in that thing? It's like. It's like when you it's, you don't golf, right? You haven't golfed in a while. Uh, driving range. Okay, about yeah. It. So when you go on the <laughs> golf course, like there's people golfing and everything. Else. You're on the fuck the fourth hole or whatever, and they're gonna go like, dude, I haven't seen the fucking cart girl anywhere. Well, the cart girl has passed by probably two or three times. It's just you haven't been fucking paying attention. Mm. Like that's the biggest thing. So like, yes, the server has passed by, but if you're engaged in this with somebody like we are right now, we're not gonna pay attention to how many times like Charlie has walked by past us. Right. It's when we need it to like, what the fuck? I, this has been sitting, I haven't had anything, and there's a disconnect between like what's actually going on and what people think at the table. So so, so do you think here uh, that the customer's not always right? <laughs> no, the customer's not always right. <laughs> now, but look it, I love it, like I love all the customers, but it's just like, like I'm not always right. I can't always be right. Nobody can always be right. Like right. that's a really weird thing to say. That's like okay. your girlfriend or your boy saying, saying, I never said that. Like, mm -hmm. I never do that. Well, that's a fucking lie, because you just did this too. You know, like that should happen. <laughs> Alright. So it's the use of those words and everything else that like I don't like. What I want is just open-mindedness. Now I'll go to the table, talk to them, or go and say, hey, what look at this is the way things happen. Unfortunately, we're human and there's are certain circumstances that you know, we were super busy and I'm sorry we neglected the table or whatever, or you, he actually walked to the table four times but you were talking and you didn't engage with him. Wow. You know, that happens and I have it on video. But people don't like, like, a lot of people don't like that. Now there are some people who are like, oh yeah, fuck, my bad. I'm sorry, I didn't realize that. You know, Most people, they, when they when they patronize a business, they want to be and that's, made to feel that's like the they're right that, no matter the only, what they well, say. Yeah, not just a restaurant, but in anything. Any should, business. It should be one of those things where people just relax, realize like what's going on and say like, I could have fucked up. Like, right. my right. bad, I'm right. sorry. Like those are those biggest things. When you do something that's not like that, you obviously made a mistake, come on. Just pull back and, 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 and like, oh, okay, cool. Well, this is what it is, I'm sorry, and let's move forward after this. Right. It's the right. engaging that you say where nobody wants to say like, yeah, I said something fucked up, and then you said something smart and logical and factual, but right. then I'm gonna say stupid shit back, back to you. Right, right. Then that's not the, that's not the engagement that I'm, that I'm looking for anymore. At first it was a little bit funny, but now I'm just kind of over it. Yeah, like I got not, you. I'm, I'm really you. not trying to engage with a lot of people anymore, and, and not be that funny. Not don't yeah. be a troll anymore. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm not. Yeah, I don't need to troll <laughs> the trollers, which I used to say is what, what I would do. Is like, you know, I, I'll sit down with you and go over a bit, go back and forth with you. Yeah. You know, and, and I'll do it logically, and I'll never say anything that that was ill, ill willed, or like wish you harm, or anything like that. But and I've said like, I'm gonna come down there and kick your ass. Like that's actually happened. Like where people have said that on Instagram. And that's ridiculous. Yeah. And you know, it's like what we've talked about on my show on the Post Millennial Podcast. Nothing really gets accomplished when you argue politics, when you when you when you have a troll fest with somebody back and forth on a comment thread. Nothing really gets accomplished. It's just a, it's a rabbit hole that goes on and on and on and on and just contributes to mental disease. So, you know, our suggestion and advice is just stay away from that or keep it to a minimum. You know, right? Or, where like, do people find the time in the, the time of day right. to like go into their you know Yelp and do all this stuff? Like, I, I don't know. I feel like there's so many more other things to do. Well, I, look, I I use Yelp and it's not all bad, you know. But I don't really read the reviews at all. Like, what I'll do is I'll go in and I'll look at the pictures or I'll look at the video and see kind of what it looks like here. Use that right here. So thank you so much, Plesco, for coming down. You want to go yeah. and tell everybody where to follow, where to find you? Yeah, sure. So uh, you can follow us on Instagram at Post Millennial Podcast. You can also check out the the actual podcast itself on YouTube. Post at Post Millennial Podcast. Uh, we wrapped season one in May, and we'll be starting season two shortly. So uh, social media is media. Check us out. Very cool. And so, like the episode that I was on, was that the end, or was that one of the going to be episode like the that's going to be the series the, two? Yeah, it's going to be the next one. Very yeah. cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So we'll put that. Down. And don't fight with Mark on Yelp. Don't troll with him. <laughs> yeah. We're Definitely want to try to keep away from that now. You'll, you'll never, it'll, there will never be an end. <laughs> <laughs> but thanks a lot, dude. I All appreciate right. it. We'll Thank have him you. back down. You guys have a good one. Peace out.